I have to say that Taylor Mountain has been on everybody's wish list since the very beginning of when the district was formed. But what makes this place so special is its proximity to the largest city in Sonoma County, Santa Rosa. 1,000 acres of beautiful open space five minutes from downtown Santa Rosa. Yeah, the public ownership of this mountain will provide people an opportunity to get here by walking, by bicycling, by some other mode of transportation, other by burning up gasoline, uh, which is incredibly expensive. And the side benefit, too, is for public health, we're all becoming more and more aware of childhood obesity, uh, the fact that we need to get up and exercise more. Here's a ready-made uh, area for people to come and take full advantage of those kinds of opportunities. Oftentimes people from the public just want to know what's the difference between land paths and the open space district. And what we tell them is open space district protects land, land paths connects people to land and to place. There's lots of different ways to get people on land and we don't go from a one size fits all. So we get people out in kayaking, on horseback, uh, people to work the land, slow movers with wheelchairs, um, kids. IUB stands for In Our Own Backyard, and we are an outdoor education program. We work with about 500 students here in Sonoma County, give or take, every year. You'd be amazed at the, the number of kids who come out with us who've never, let's say, seen the ocean. I mean, a lot of them have never been over to the beach. We've had teachers say to us that the only science their kids get all year long are on these four visits when they come out with land paths in the IUB program. We worked with a certain group of high school students throughout the year. We took them out 22 times to Riverfront Park in Windsor. At the beginning of the program, a bunch of these students came out in fancy clothes, flip-flops, purses. We took them on this, this fairly difficult hike up through the Redwoods and they had a hard time and after that visit they definitely came the next time a little bit more prepared. On this program these high school students were actually teaching and mentoring sixth grade students from Cali and by the end of our time with these Windsor High students they were all fully dialed as to how to how to be out in nature, how to come prepared for a day out in the field and also how to teach kids what they had learned there on their own. This land here, the Bear Farm land, um, being protected by the Open Space District and helping the city to preserve this land is very significant for our community because we have very little open space here. I grew up in this neighborhood, I grew up in Roseland my entire life and I've attended all the schools here and I've watched the neighborhood go um, from being at the urban edge to being very uh, as central to the city and having a lot of subdivisions outside of it. So um, the rural nature has really changed and it's much more urban now. I think people took it for granted that we got to play in nature as children and nowadays uh, you can't take that for granted. Children do not get out in nature very much and what they're losing is that sense of exploration and surprise that nature just gives endlessly. Picking the right places to begin with is one of the important things that we do. But also besides just buying the land, we want to get behind programs to educate our kids about the importance of setting aside natural lands for, for the future. We have a continuous flow of kids that come to the garden and they come here for a variety of reasons. They come here because their parents have community plots. They come here because it's a storytelling time. They come here because they're part of a school program or a free lunch program. They come here because it looks fun. I'm thankful that they're here because like, I come and play with my friends out here and instead of like being, being home at board during the summertime. I have the squash right there. This all right here is green beans, a couple tomatoes right here, tomatoes back there and over there, chili plants somewhere over there. Um, I got water, weed, and a couple of friends helped me put it in. If I didn't have this place to come, I would probably be home on the computer or uh, watching TV. The Open Space District wants to make sure that the purchases that it makes resonate with the residents of our county who supported us to begin with. Over time, we've seen more and more kids getting away from contact with nature. And we know today just how important nature is to childhood development, to raising a healthy new generation of people that are going to care about this planet. And so 
we not only protect land and go out and purchase it, but we make sure that kids get connected to places like this. If you've ever been back east or even to some parts of California, you may have noticed that their coastlines have subdivisions and shopping malls that are right at the edge of the ocean. In contrast, Sonoma County's beaches are mostly open to the public and it's coastline free from development. In this segment, we will learn how the Open Space District works with many partners to protect and preserve all areas in Sonoma County where land meets water. Public access to open space land and our coast in particular is uh, an incredible asset to our quality of life here in Sonoma County. And not only that, but people come from all over the world to enjoy our coastline and enjoy the open space in Sonoma County. Sonoma Coast State Park is the second most visited state park in the state of California. And you've got some of the most spectacular wetlands in the United States there in the San Pablo Bay area. The specific property we're on right now is the Willow Creek acquisition, and this is about a 5,200 acre watershed that we're standing on. It's one of the lowest tributaries to the Russian River. Had this property not been protected by the Open Space District and some of the other agencies, this property would continue to be uh, logged, and there's a chance that this property could have been developed. Small little parks, a 100 acre postage stamp piece of property, or small areas of preserved land don't support a sustainable population of animals. When we acquire lands that are going to be eventually for public use, there has, there's a whole process of master planning and getting the facilities put in place, and sometimes that takes several years. And We find that the nonprofits like LandPass, leading the docent led tours, give people immediate access in a way they wouldn't have otherwise. LandPass is a long-standing partnership with the Open Space District. We like to think of it as the open space district protecting lands and land pads really focusing on connecting people with those lands. Uh, we lead over 50 tours uh, every year. We have an environmental education program that uh, works with over 500 kids around Sonoma County. And really the idea is to show the, the public where that quarter cent sales tax has gone. Carrington Ranch and the partnership between the uh, Open Space District and Land Pads in getting volunteers connected with that ranch has been a fantastic example of what uh, an important role volunteers have in some of these protected properties. In fact, the, really the only way that we can help state parks to run this property is with that volunteer investment. Volunteers are also have been instrumental in stewarding the property hands-on and again really helping to operate a large property like this on the shoestring budget that we've really been, uh, been given here. The model that we've crafted with uh, LandPaz was developed in an era of shrinking government budgets and, uh, and shrinking state park budgets as well. It seems that something like this will be a part of the future of land management in California. Well, Sonoma County is right on the Pacific Flyway from Canada to Mexico and um, having the wetlands along the way, the migratory pattern for birds to land in, spend time, rest, and then take off again is very important. We've lost over 90% of our wetlands in California, and so it's very important for us to try to protect what's left. 